I'm Diego Cordovez. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Phil Till Poker. And hot off the presses, The Grinder has won the 50K Players' Championship. The Players' Championship at the TPC WSOP. <laughs> and it's not as if he's just some uh, young guy who came in and won it. He's won many tournaments. This is his almost third. almost $9 million in career winnings. His third separate seven-figure score. And he was card player, player of the year in 2006. Kind of quiet for a couple of years, but he came back with a big splash. And we're going to talk to him about that, about poker in general, and about owning a bus. <laughs> That's awesome. So you're coming right off the $50,000 players event. And uh, I've always thought of you as a no limit player, but this is all the games. And you do have a background playing all the games, right? Oh, yeah. I play, actually, I play these games more than I play no limit. I mean, I'm actually a better, I'm a better mixed game player than a no limit player. That's a secret, people. though. Yeah, that's why the grind over. Do, I don't want anybody to know this, but a lot of people know I play online. They see me on, they see me on the sites all the time playing eight game mix, seven game mix on tilt, or eight game mix on poker stars. Yeah, so I think I, I played with you before you were famous, and I just knew the grinder from online. Yeah, actually, it was one of the probably one of the first guys to play online poker. So I've been around for a long time, and uh, that's all I used to do. Studies actually probably my best game. And I always do well in seven card stud, and that's all I play when I go to Los Angeles. I'm playing the 100 200 game because that's the biggest game they have, and I do really well in the game. But I play all the games pretty much well, and then uh, it never hurts to have the no limit of PLO in there as well. Well, I always that's what I thought when when you got to the final table. I thought now this really plays to your advantage because now it's just going to be straight no limit. Even when you were three handed and you were way down in chips, you're much more no limit player than the other two guys. Even though they're great players, but. You've well, won I, a lot of no limit tournaments. So. Yeah, I've done. Uh, when I make a final table on a no limit, usually I close it out really well. And uh, I've been in situations where I was the shortest stack and end up winning and have all the chips by the time we're three, four handed. And it was almost this situation. I actually, open. I thought open. I played really, really well this tournament. And he came back from nothing and he ran us up to ten million. But I, I found a way to make a comeback. And uh, I took a coin flip against him where I put in. I had enough money in the pot to make the call. And I thought he had like a mid pair, like eights or nines, and I king queen and. Uh, I still have four million left behind if I, but I know if I, I knock him out, I'm heads up and I still have a right. good lead. So yeah. I thought it was the right call and I was getting the right price. This is your third seven-figure score, and very few people can say that. When you're sitting there at the final, does the enormity of the cash start weighing on you, or do you just feel totally comfortable? Well, I always feel comfortable. I mean, I, and actually, I mean, I haven't even felt this term yet. Most people are like, wow, you won like one of the greatest tournaments anybody ever mm -hmm. won. But I mean, I look at every tournament as just another tournament. I don't know. Maybe I haven't felt the uh, the feeling of it, and and it's like a, a series of tournaments that we have to play. So it's like I'm just moving on to the next tournament, trying to win the next tournament. So maybe after the World Series is over, maybe I'll have the high and uh, like, wow, I can't believe I won the, but the Poker the, Players Championship. That's the timing of it because most people are already fifty thousand in the hole. You're already free rolling for the rest of the the event. That's like a great feeling. This is true. I mean. <laughs> the the, the storyline, which was great, is the fact that you and your brother Robert both made the final table, and obviously you're very happy for each other. But it's also awkward when you're at the final table. W w was there any awkwardness from the other players or with each well, other? Well, I don't know how com comfortable the other players were <laughs> with, but uh, you know, it's like it's it's a weird situation. It's like a situation we have to, you know, it's going to happen where siblings make a final table together. I know it happened before. It seems but like it was more like, of a disadvantage than an advantage in a lot of ways because it, it's you feel good. like you're scrutinized yeah. and you might not make a play that you would otherwise. Yeah, sometimes people are like, how come you make the call against him? Why would you, you know, raise it? And he re raises it and he does not, you know, usually grinder will make that call. You know, I don't want people to, like, think that we're, you know, playing together. So I, I, I made sure of that, so I had to knock him out in fifth. <laughs> <laughs> so because when I, when I made the raise with the Jack Queen, it's 200,000, everyone's looking at me they're like, oh, let's see what your mom's going to favor now. <laughs> right. So actually, my mom screams out, she thinks Rob has a jack queen, and I have an ace-10. Right. So my mom says jack or something. I'm pretty sure that she said jack or something. <laughs> right. Right. So she says jack. She's confused because I have Rob actually covered, you know, and uh, she wants Rob to stay in with right. me. Right. He's, so He's I, got the ace king. That's no, she, no, Rob has the ace-10. I got the jack ace queen. Ace-10, I mean, yeah. And the jack falls, whatever. And at the other hand, he got knocked out. My mom started crying. She goes, how could you do that? How could you do it? And she made me she feel really, bad. She said that to you? She said, so you'll see that. It'll be funny. It'll be <laughs> she starts crying. How could you do that? I was like, what do you mean? It's poker. What can I do? Made your mother your cry, though, I mean. So then the next day, she goes, Rob, can I get a bonus? She goes, no. Why would I give you a bonus? You root for Grinder. Right. Like, Grinder give you the bonus. So I had, to, I had to give her some money. That's fair. You know, that's, that's one of those tough situations where no matter what you do, 
someone will find an objection. Yeah. So if you don't play back at your brother, someone's going to be upset. If you yeah. do play back at him and then someone ends up folding, they're upset. So you just have to play your game. Yeah, I just played what I know. I, you know, I, I don't want to say I'm staying away, but I, I, I tried to, like, you know, I'd feel so guilty if I knocked him. But it, it was a point where I had to make the call anyway. Yeah. So it was, just, it, was, it was a crazy feeling. It's a feeling like... It's a good feeling and a bad feeling. It's a good feeling that we're both on the final table together, but it's a bad feeling to you know to get in a situation where you don't want you know you don't really want to hurt each other, but sometimes you have to. Like, someone's going to be unhappy. Someone's going to be unhappy, likely. but you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure he's happy if he knew the results is first and fifth, he would take it, right. <laughs> rather than me finishing fifth and fourth. You know? Well, at the time, you, you didn't have a lot of chips, so I mean, it could have been fifth and fourth or something, and then it'd be extra extra Worth bitter. Worth the, the fact that you came <laughs> back to win it, it changes things a lot. Yeah, I, I had a good game plan to win when I came to the final table, and I thought. Like, you know, my experience might pay off. And then when I was three-handed, I, I knew I could just stay focused. And I, I don't even know how I got that many chips back without, like, showdowns. I just, like, I guess I robbed them. <laughs> I was following it online, which in some ways you really assess what's going on even more objectively because every hand you see, you know, Michael Mizrachi raises, takes the blinds, takes the blinds, you know, and it really becomes apparent that you were the most active of the final three. Oh, yeah, it, was, uh, it, felt, like, uh, it felt like I was a triple, I was the shortest stack, and I was still the most active, you know. So, when, you know, sometimes when you're, you're short stack, you know, and you start getting aggressive, they think you actually have a hand. So you get away with a lot of stuff, and like, no, he's not going to make a play with a short stack, and he doesn't want to finish in third. So, so I took that, I took advantage of the situation, and I used that against him, and I guess it worked out well. And then when I started building chips, I started making some plays, and uh, before you know, we're all three of us had the same, the same right. stack, and then uh, I Was started that really real uh, showdowns. Yeah, and then I started so picking up some chips, picking up some chips, and I got in the hand. Then uh, David Open started, you know, plummeting down a little bit of stack, and then uh, I took a, I took a coin flip with him. And uh, I would I would end up being right, you know. So now that you won the 1.6 million, you're gonna buy a bus. No, it's actually one of my bad decisions <laughs> I made in my life. Really? No, it was, it was a good experience, but actually, and it was a funny story. When I got the bus, the first day, I was like, don't you need a license? It's like, no, just a regular driver's license. <laughs> I was like, well, really? And then the first day, I'd come around the Commerce Casino. I, I, I scratched the whole bus up around the stop sign. <laughs> I was like, and then I was driving up mountains, this. And after I, before you know it, I thought I would travel with everywhere. I just used it up the north and, co north and south coast of California. Then I had somebody actually ship it to Nevada, and I just couldn't do the toilet stuff, start to do the cleaning. I was like, forget this, and I had stored in outdoor resorts, and it was costing me like 1,100 a month, and and I lost and depreciated a lot, and I lost like maybe 30, 40 thousand. I thought that was one of my, my bad investments I made. Was that was that something you did impulsively after you had a seven-figure score? Or? Yeah, it was just something like you know when you're 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 that young. I mean, I was about 24, 25 years old. It's like, wow, look how much money I just won. I mean, right. I, I have to spend something. I have to buy something I would you know always wanted. Something really big. Something really really big <laughs> and, and costly. For people that didn't that don't. No, I mean I didn't even realize till I saw a picture that it's not like I thought it was just like an RV, but I mean it was like a like a bus, it was like, like a rock and roll like band tour bus. bus. It was, right? like a it tour was bus. very, it was very big. I actually had it. I used to have it like you know Bay 101. Ever got? I, I parked in the Bay 101 parking lot. I was sleeping in the middle That's of the parking I, lot. Yeah. yeah, so it was pretty cool. And uh, See, I, I like followed it for the fun. first six seven months, and that was it. I mean I remember reading somewhere you said that it was wonderful because you have your family traveling with you. I mean one of the things about poker obviously is you're traveling around. It's not that practical. You've got kids and brothers and parents and I mean it's kind of fun to have them around it's just the maintenance aspect I guess that yeah. wears you down I just couldn't deal with it anymore so I had, uh, I had to uh, move on and uh, just get rid of it and just uh, deal with a car and the hotel rooms that's a lot it's easier it's funny that everyone remembers that but it's probably not that big a chapter in your life but it's, yeah it, it, it was only like a, a <laughs> six months first, when you first hit the scene it was like you know you were the guy with the bus yeah, yeah and, and sometimes people ask if I still have the bus I'm like that's way gone you were the only guy <laughs> under 80 who has like a RV yeah <laughs> So I mean it was a cool thing to have and uh and uh, now I just I decided instead of having a bus thing in Vegas I might as well just buy a house in Vegas. Right. More more practical. Yeah, I wish I didn't buy it cuz everything went psh, all the <laughs> the how the real estate went way under. You've had a uh, enormous success especially in the WPT, some huge years there. Any work hard player player of the year. In the World Series you you'd had some lean years and you hadn't won a bracelet even though you've won a bunch of WPT tournaments. Apart from the money and a big cash, was that something on your mind? Is that important to you at all, or well, at this stage, being well, older, it's not a big deal anymore? Well, I mean, no. I, I was uh, like, I look at the tournaments as any other tournament. I always wanted a World Series of Poker bracelet. But what can I do? I mean, I try my hardest, and I, I, I work, I work so so hard just to try to get it. But sometimes, you know, it's unfortunate enough that you get lucky and some, you get unlucky in some hands, and you you get caught in between some hands where. 
where I was like, there's nothing you can do. I mean, my highest finish was third before, you know, before this actually happened. And, uh, I, and now, now I actually won my first place. And just for someone to say their first place is the 50K event, the most yeah, prestigious cool. event, I mean, <laughs> and one, probably the one of the most skilled events out of the whole mm -hmm. series. And it's, it's just a great feeling to have. And now I'm on the Chip Reese Trophy, and that's Sting for Life, and that's, that's a pretty cool thing. And it's, I feel like I won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a great feeling. You know, if you look at the list, I was looking today at the list of all-time tournament money winners, and basically, if you looked at, you're like the first guy who hadn't won the main event of the World Series of Poker or the World Poker Tour Championship. So you've amassed... Just Daniel uh, and Michael are the two who right, haven't won the... Right. There's, there's very few, and uh, you're way up there now. You know, you have like almost nine million in earnings. So, so you I guess that? I'm consistent, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I've done well. I mean, like, uh, but I've taken a lot of time off, like, with the past few years because of the family. Like, this past this past four and five months, I've been in Miami playing some private games, PLO and, and big PLO and uh, no limit games. And I decided to just take my time off and uh, save everything I got for the World Series because I know I'm going to play anywhere from 30 to 40 events. So I know I, I know I'm going to have to get my mind working and and, and I'm going to have to work real hard when I get over here. And, and there's not going to be much sleep. I just go to sleep five, six hours and go to work the next day. Five, six, I go to sleep. I mean, I'm just trying to stay on the same schedule and I know um, it's going to take a lot out of me and this this actually these two tournaments the stud and the and uh, the poker players champion took a lot out of me and I actually was starting to fall asleep on the tables the last four right. days last I was going to ask Fridays. you right after the, the poker players championship you're in the stud and you go super deep were you mentally exhausted were you elated were you well, first, actually, I actually thought, because I had to do the national anthem, so I thought they wanted me at 11 o'clock, so actually, I didn't even get any sleep. Probably I got like two hours sleep. I played the 1500 $1, whatever, I think it was a 15 or $1,000, no limit, whatever it was the next day. The very next day. The same day, day actually. Well, I finished at 5 in the morning, got here at, five, at 11 o'clock in the morning, and I uh, ended up playing that tournament, and uh, I was running really well for the Friday. I, I quadrupled it, right? I thought this was going to be an unbelievable year, and I lasted, it lasted like six, seven hours, and then... Uh, then the next day, I think it was the next day, it was a stud, and I decided to play. Uh, I knew I was going to do fairly well, and I was looking forward to the stud event. I always look forward to playing the champion stud event. That's mm -hmm. like the event I always want to play as a stud high event. I would have skipped that 1500 no limit or whatever right after winning the 50K. It would be pretty hard to bear down. And, uh, it never and hurts to make no another no six, 700000 No. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough, though, to, to regroup mentally, I think. Yeah, now like these like these small tournaments, you know, I want to play them, but then... Uh, then I look at these 5 p.m. tournaments. I was like, I have to play these 5 p.m. So I want to give my chips away at 5 I like, how can I miss these stud high low or stud high championships? I just can't play well in these small events. So I was, yeah, I was so. going to say that you're probably going to play all the 5 p.m.s. So yeah. you have to pick and choose your noons, really. Yeah, and and it's just that I'm in the lead right now for the WC Player of the Year. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm in the lead, but I mean, or it's very close. Vladimir is right next to me, and I think he's deep in this event. I heard. Yeah, he was leading in the study or back. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, he, it looks like he's gonna be my challenger, and I mean, I'm, maybe he deserves it. I took his championship away. Maybe right. he'll, maybe he'll get. You won the heads up battle. He won the heads up battle. Maybe he won the WSOP. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing him win. I mean, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. I mean, the guy play. I thought the guy plays really well. You mentioned uh, playing the private games, taking some time off. Just looking at it from the outside, in 05 and 06, you had huge multi-million dollar years, and you were traveling, playing all the tournaments. 07 and 08 and 09, I guess, you were still doing well, but obviously, big letdown from the earlier years. Is that just the way tournaments are? Or well, 2007, I was playing a lot of 60 l tournaments at Planet Hollywood. I was actually uh, the ambassador there at the poker room, so I mean, I've... I couldn't play that many as many tournaments as I wanted to. I wanted to travel, but uh, I cut down a lot of my tournaments after 05 and 06 and uh, and through 2010. And I just thought maybe you know, I felt like you know my life was repeating every year, and I wanted to have a change in my life. You know, maybe at the time everything was just going too fast, and I just want to slow down the pace a little bit. And I felt like I was aging, you know, real too quick. So I just wanted to take my time and enjoy the family. And I just I said I'll just wait for the. You know, those past years, I'll play a few, you know, maybe an average maybe 30 to 50 tournaments a year instead of playing 75 to 100, anywhere around there. So I cut down a lot of the traveling and expenses and uh, mm -hmm. decided to stay home and uh, just enjoy the family. And um, and 2010, now I have a great start. Maybe uh, I might, after this uh, World Series, I might start, you know, maybe even go for a card player of the year. I don't know if I, right. if I have a chance. but If you win another I'll, tournament here or, or have some other big scores, then you then I'll, right in there. Then I'm definitely going to go for card player of the year. But if I don't have another score, I'm probably just going to let go and go back to Florida and play all the you know, high stakes poker in Florida. Hopefully it comes out July 1st. Would you, would you consider playing any of the tournaments in Europe? Because I noticed in your earnings you have like 8.8 .8 
eight million in the U.S. and seventy thousand in Europe. Now you have kids, so it might be hard to travel over there. But would you go over there if you want in contention for Player of the Year? Yeah, I played. Uh, I believe maybe like four tournaments in Europe, and, and London was a success. But I played the Part Two Poker Tour. I finished fourteenth. I had it all in with Kings for seven eight for a huge. You know, it was like four bets all in pre-flop and uh that, took, that that was pretty brutal and uh after that i was like oh my god but that was one of the best poker tournaments i ever played in was that part two poker tour tournament i mean there was a lot of you know a lot of dead money and it was like you know it was just a great atmosphere and also uh, and i went to actually the one of the i think it was the ebt maybe poker stars one of those uh, one of those events i went to i got it on with top set you know Came like eight, five, two, two clubs. I got King Nine, and we both like the chip lead in the tournament. And this is early. We both got all in hits a flush. I mean, so I mean the tournaments there was unbelievable. I think they're a lot better than than in America. Right. So I, maybe I'm gonna start traveling to Europe, and uh, you know, I see everybody doing it, and uh, you know, take some time and, and and head over there with the family, maybe. Or well, for now there's the World Series because you're on a roll. Like I said, you're on a free roll. You might as well really capitalize, and uh, I have no doubt you'll do pretty well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little worried. I've been 0 for 4 the last four tournaments, <laughs> so I've been falling asleep. So it's, it's yeah, been over four tournaments since a multi seven figure score. I know. Yeah, it's, it's a rough. slump. It's rough. slump. Well, and the, last year, last year was brutal. I mean, I played like I would say I played like 30 events, and I I, I got deep and and I just like bubbled so many tournaments. I didn't even cash. The only thing I won last year was actually the horse satellite. Would have played one spot, so I won the horse satellite. <laughs> last year. Right. So I decided to take the lammers and use it for other tournaments. Right. So people don't realize I saw something where I don't know if it was last year or the year before you played 27 World Series tournaments with two caches and yeah. you're an excellent player but you know that's tournament like, poker yeah, has tournaments swings. you know yeah, you yeah know, the, like the year before i was had seven caches in the world series i was right so i had the most cash in the world series and i mean just it's like it's a roller coaster right and you know when you have you're in your high when you're going well everything goes well when you're down under everything just stays that way i mean this the well, poker now, is now things are going well so uh there's a new champion every more, day i look right. forward to more caches and i think you might come up with another wrestler yeah especially you're confident you're playing well just take a day of rest and then uh no rest more. when it comes to the World Series. Right. Interesting as rest. Right. Um, well, th well, given how much you're playing, thanks for coming by, spending time with us. No problem. And guys. good luck to you in all these uh, these Thank, events. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for joining us on the Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. Right to the Scoop at carplayer.com.